uh, Christopher Griffiths to give his presentation on psoriasis and the immune system. How have we come to where we are today and what do we know as of today? And you have again 12 minutes, Chris, so I guess you'll be able to do that. We know Chris very well. He's the foundation chair in dermatology at University of Manchester and this year you became the uh, Emeritus Professor of Dermatology. Please, Chris. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Lars, for asking me to speak. And of course, as you know, I was asked as a, a late substitute. So I feel so I'm sort of one of the, the youth team coming on to replace um, um, uh, someone such as um, Cristiano Ronaldo off the bench uh, to, re to uh, stand in for George Stingle. So I'm gonna talk to you about psoriasis and the immune system. And the good news for me is that quite a lot of what um, I'm gonna talk about, you've already heard. So give me the credit because that means that uh, you'd have remembered it from what I said, from not what others said. So these are my disclosures. And this is what we're dealing with. And of course, it's nothing new. Radcliffe Crocker was a British dermatologist based in London. And he very succinctly said in, not in the 19th century, two theories as to how psoriasis commences. Firstly, it could be inflammation in the dermis as a primary event, and the epidermal hyperplasia is secondary. And, or it could be that inflammatory changes in the dermis are a secondary event. And as you've heard, and as I'll show you, up until the early 1980s, theory two held sway, but now it's very much theory one. Though there's still some people who would like us to take us back to, to uh, the second theory. So this is what I'm going to talk about, serendipity, T-cells, adhesion molecules, cytokines, and my view of what the future may be like. And when I started dermatology um, as a registrar at St. Mary's, which was actually almost 40 years ago, I was very lucky to be working in a department which was very far thinking, led by Lionel Fry and with Helgi Valdemarsen, who is professor of immunology, and Barbara Baker, their very talented postdoc. And they were formulating the view that psoriasis was in fact T cell mediated and the, the immune system was important. And I was involved in some of those early experiments where really, sort of collecting the skin biopsies really. And the evidence we had, we said, added further weight to the notion that the pathogenesis of psoriasis is primarily dependent on activities released by T helper cells. Now by activities, we didn't know about cytokines in those days. We published these papers and no one believed us because they said, well, it's all due to the epidermis and nothing to do with um, these T cells. And then <clears throat> just before that, there'd been this, this uh, serendipitous observation by two Swiss rheumatologists who were using cyclosporine very high dose to treat arthritis of various forms. And two or three of those patients had psoriatic arthritis and of course their psoriasis resolved. But they made, the, so they made that observation, but they believed that cyclosporine was working because it was a proliferative disease and therefore working on the keratinocytes. But um, working with Lionel, um, he felt that actually this was a T cell targeted therapy. And if we were correct, um, psoriasis should respond very, very well to cyclosporine if it was T cell mediated. If it didn't, then we were wrong. And luckily we were right and that showed, uh, that really sort of supported that hypothesis. And then others have also been very heavily involved with that, Jan, Jan Boss, uh, particularly working um, here in Amsterdam. And so the, the theory at that time, which pretty much holds sway, is that T cells and psoriasis, in the epidermis it's predominantly CD8 T cells, though interestingly, in late onset psoriasis, it seems to be more CD4 cells in the CD8, which may go along with the HLA associations that Jonathan's just discussed. And as I mentioned, um, here in Amsterdam, Jan Boss, who was at the Academic Medical Center here, was really sort of trying to pull everything together, that the immune uh, components of not just psoriasis, but skin inflammation in general. And this early work, based on the work by Wayne Straling, Straling is actually very useful to go back and read because a lot of what he predicted has come true. And that's really, I think it's very much a disease that's driven by the innate immune response rather than the adaptive. And then um, <coughs> there was then work that uh, took, was taking place um, around the world looking at adhesion molecules, new adhesion molecules coming forward uh, in the, in the sort of mid, eight, mid late 1980s. And I was lucky enough to work with Brian Nikoloff, who was um, working in the University of Michigan. And we did some of the first studies to show that adhesion molecules are expressed in inflammatory skin disease. 
and where you find ICAM expressed in the epidermis, you find epidermal lymphocytes. And so putting all that together, we were able to show that probably adhesion molecules are important in psoriasis, not just on the uh, keratinocytes, but also on the endothelium. So T cells are important, but they get into the skin and stay in the skin and react with skin components through adhesion molecules. So the theory at that time, and I think this is still sort of in general true, is that this was a, a yin-yang between Th1 and Th2 diseases. Psoriasis being the archetypal Th1, atopic dermatitis being Th2, and therefore organs gamma interferon, interleukin-2, lesser extent interleukin-12 that were driving the psoriasis process. So it's T cells and Th1 were the sort of the view in the early 1990s. And interestingly, and I'll come back to this at the end, there were a number of observations made over the years, anecdotal again, that patients with who um, received a bone marrow transplant from a patient with psoriasis, they had leukemia, received a bone marrow transplant, they developed psoriasis, and also the, op the opposite had been described several times. People with psoriasis developed leukemia or lymphoma, received a bone marrow transplant, and their psoriasis was, inverted commas, cured. So there are some components of bone marrow that was very important in transmitting or um, being involved in the development of psoriasis. I think then the next key observation, and Peter's referred to it already, was this one, this very neat experiment, which actually occurred and published in the very first issue of Nature Medicine. And this was a work done by J uh, Jim Kruger in New York, where they had used a, a diphtheria um, toxin um, bound to interleukin-2, with the premise that this would only bind to cells and in express interleukin-2 receptor, T cells, not keratinocytes. So this is quite a brave study to do, actually. They showed that this was effective, and they also showed that the CD3 cells started to decline very rapidly in the skin before there was clinical response. So I think is another important step in the way of showing that um, psoriasis is T cell mediated, and that's an important target. And then we have the, the mouse models. As you know, there's no, you know, there's no animal that actually has psoriasis except the mouse models that we develop. You've heard that you saw uh, the presentation just by Lars about the act using activated immunocytes. This is work that Brian Nikolov did, um, using activated immunocytes, um, IL-2 activated on skid mice, so normal skin, skid mice, you can't make that transform into psoriasis. But if you put in activated lymphocytes into the uninvolved skin, psoriasis uninvolved skin on skid mice, it develops into psoriasis, showing that the activated T cells seem to be important. And then serendipity then played an important, another role. Um, Alice Gottlieb, um, working in New York, was asked to see a patient who had Crohn's disease and psoriasis. As you know, about 10% of people with Crohn's disease have psoriasis. It was only a matter of time before someone received infliximab for their Crohn's disease, and they also had psoriasis, and she made the observation that the, the uh, psoriasis had completely cleared after the single infusion of infliximab, and that then, she then did a, uh, a small case series which, which confirmed that observation. That really underscored the importance of TNF-alpha, the first sort of cytokine, really to be um, recognized as very important in psoriasis and targetable. And then um, one of our colleagues on faculty, um, Kurt and Conrad and, Bo um, and Boyman and Net Frank Nestle working in Switzerland were able to show that this animal model, which was a different form than the one that uh, Brian Nikoloff was using, using AGR deficient mice, um, that T cell proliferation is important for the psoriasis phenotype, and also you can block that with, and they used a tenocept in this model to show that targeting TNF alpha would improve psoriasis in this model. So you have T cells, interleukin, uh, T cells, interleukin 2, and TNF alpha. And then a series of studies, I only sort of highlighted a couple of them, show that um, not only is it Th1 cells which are important, but it's Th17 cells inter uh, which are producing interleukin 17 under the control, under the jurisdiction, if you like, of interleukin 23 produced by dendritic cells. And those are both shown to be raised in psoriasis. Both, uh, the, um, so this is important when you start to think about the future targeting. Interleukin-17, interleukin-23 suddenly become important players. And I think it's true to say that psoriasis is probably you know, the, the prototypic interleukin-17 disease. 
So if you try and pull it all together, you know, what are the inflammatory circuits? Well, really, I think in chronic plaque psoriasis, you focus, for the most part, on interleukin-17. Um, there's variations in this um, choreography between the cytokines, depending on whether it's pustular psoriasis or paradoxical psoriasis, that's psoriasis that occurs after anti-TNF therapy. But interleukin-17 seems at present to be the key target. But of course, you know, we, 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 people often talk of psoriasis being an autoimmune disease. And I guess probably the main, one of the main exponents of that or proponents of that has been your Prince, who has done some very careful studies over the years, initially looking at um, streptococcal antigen, but then focusing on components of the melanocyte, Adam being one of them, uh, saying that this is the an, the, an autoantigen that is responsible in a lot of cases of psoriasis, and maybe this is what we should be targeting. So there's a view that it could be an innate immune response or it could be an autoimmune disease. So if the pathogenesis of psoriasis, you can pull it together by the, you know, the uh, key um, stimulants, the key catalysts in the genetic predisposition, uh, obesity, as we've heard from John often, um, various pathogens such as strep, drugs, smoking, alcohol, stress, and then you have this you know, production of th, uh, T cells uh, producing th, uh, interleukin-17, and also um, type 1 um, uh, cytokines such as gamma interferon, which are all targetable. And we're going to hear later in this session about the residual tissue resident memory T cells, which, is, which seem to be so important in the relapsing nature of psoriasis. So to close then, what do I think we should be focusing on in the future? Well, one area that we've, I've had an interest in, and I think is now sort of coming to the fore again, is neuroinflammation. You need that neural su su uh, supply to the skin to have the inflammatory response. If you have a transection of epidermal nerves, psoriasis is cleared. Mast cells, I do think, play a role. Langerhans cells, uh, initially there's an interest in it, not so much now, but I do think they play a role. And I think that Tregs are going to start to come to the fore. So with um, Langerhans cells, an observation that's been made many times now is that in uninvolved skin and psoriasis, Langerhans cells don't function normally. They don't migrate in response to allergen or to cytokines. And that's still an unresolved question as to why that happens. It's probably under control of interleukin-17, but it may be important when one starts to think about Tregs. And Tregs you know, act in concert, as you know, with Langerhans cells. And I think that there's now increasing evidence that there is an abnormality in T-regulatory cell function in psoriasis. Now, whether that's due to the T-regs themselves or whether it's due to the microenvironment that they find themselves in is not fully understood. But there is an abnormality in T-reg function. Therefore, that suppressive activity is lost and the psoriasis gets away from that. So if you think about how you can tie all that together, well, I think my view is that if you're looking to what's going to happen in the next 10 to 15 years, as is across, happening across the rest of medicine, is that we need to start to think about different ways of managing patients with psoriasis and, auto and inflammatory skin disease. And that's not biologics, and it's not small molecules. It's actually probably cell therapy. And, so, and cell, cell therapy could be uh, mesenchymal stromal cells derived from umbilical cord, Tregs, which are also already starting to be used now in prevention of transplant rejection, and CAR T cells, chimeric antigen receptor T cells, which have been used mainly in cancer. Now the first study in inflammatory skin disease is being undertaken in PEN, where they're using the obvious antigen target in the Pemphigus vulgaris. So there's a lot to do yet. Psoriasis is not, is not solved, and the immunologists are gonna be in business for a long time. And I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more about that at the ISID meeting in uh, Tokyo in May next year. Thank you.